on his ace feet, Darakesh Ramachan, why men should be hair. Why men should be hair, Darakesh. <laughs> Have you heard the story of Samson and Delilah? Samson was this biblical figure in uh, the Hebrew Bible where he's portrayed to be a strong man with a nice long hair. But he becomes vulnerable when he loses his hair. That was the ancient, earliest known history in, in our times to say that uh, the hair was portrayed as a symbol of strength and uh, power. So my fellow Toastmasters and guests, as you might see, why men should be hairy. From the past, ancient history to our present day, men have influenced in uh, society, culture, music, uh, ideas, philosophies, and also made a bold statement through their hairy anatomy. There is a famous saying, can forget a man but not his mustache. <laughs> <laughs> From the great kings to the funniest comedians or to your very old grandpa, you might have remembered him for what he did and what he stood for, but at the same time, you might also remember his mustache or a beard or sometimes a wig. You know, now. <laughs> but in recent days, we have noticed men are getting rid of their God-given, homegrown, all-natural, the testosterone level indicator, the hair. <laughs> so I'm here to shed some light on the history and share a couple of success stories from my past and uh, tell you what's going on with men and the hair in today's world. So I'll be talking about eight different sections, which all uh, were looks like one should be hairy. <laughs> Again, uh, there's going to be an evolution of what, how it happened and famous personalities, my story, and I'll be wrapping up with uh, why men should be hairy. <laughs> the evolution. In 2000 BC, the wealthy Egyptian men and kings had uh, hair dresses, dreadlocks, and wigs uh, that represent their from a wealthy family. That's the first known uh, uh, carving of the Egyptian men. And in 50 BC, we have the Roman Emperor Julius Caesar. He liked more of his hair down, and he had a chrome comb his hair in the front and had a crown on his top. And the next, in after AD, like 300 and 400 AD, we had the Roman Empire downfall, and after that, people started to dress or have the hair like a Germanic people, like where they have the long hair and stuff. And there was a king called King Claudia V, and his nickname was Le Chugu, which means the hairy. <laughs> <laughs> And in 1600s, we have the France king, uh, King Louis XIV, who had a wig which went all the way along down to his uh, feet. And uh, that was made popular by King Louis XIV. And in 1700s, we had uh, President, President George Washington, where he had his hair back, no wigs, powdered his hair, had some side locks, and that's why maybe he's on a $100 bill and not <laughs> Alexander Hamilton because he had a Maybe a shorter hair than George <laughs> Washington. Okay, I want audience participation in this one. Can you name this, these four famous personalities? Lauren Howard. So we have Hitler and Charlie Chaplin. Oh. That mustache is called toothbrush mustache. Yeah, For some reason, know. after World War II, it never got popular. <laughs> 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 and this person. Thank yeah. Elvis Thank you very much. Yes, he's known for his bad boy looks, and the hash is called Pompadour. That was Presley. And the famous four? The Beatles. The Beatles, Beatles of course. They have this hairstyle called the Mock Top, which was pretty famous in the 1960s. And Bob Marley. Bob Marley. Bob Marley. Bob Marley. In the 1970s, Bob Marley represented the dreadlock style, and he's not only known for his looks, but he's also known for another thing. Reagan. You know what I mean? Reggae. Oh. <laughs> no, we are singing reggae, that's what I think. Okay. Well, this person, the Afro hairstyle with the pencil mustache? Jimmy Hendrix. Jimmy Hendrix, exactly. But we also have our own rock star within our audience. Thank you for lending me the picture. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the 
look how handsome he is. <laughs> and the famous Magnum PI, yeah. the PI stand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this man need no introduction. So even if you go to a party where people are drinking and doing stuff, and you see a guy with a beard and a long hair, you would say, hey, that guy looks like a Jesus. <laughs> and uh, anyway, you won't, you won't go to a mall and sit on a guy who's dressed in red with a shaved face and stuff, asking you, hey, what do you want for Christmas? You want the guy to have a mustache and a beard? Santa. So these are the uh, pictures of you men and their heritage and what they represent. Because everybody represents in some form or the other by dressing the way in which they speak. But the first thing we notice is the hairstyle. Native American Viking, Mexican with the mustache, Italian like fully laid back hair, and Asian of course, and South Indian with the mustache like. I could do that too. And the North Indian has the beard, and the African has the, uh, the dreadlocks. All right. So I want to share my personal story. This is my grandpa, Mr. Ramaswamy. We used to call him the cotton candy grandpa because he had a chest hair that looked like cotton candy. <laughs> there was a time where I was eating a cotton candy and it didn't melt or you know, taste sweet. Finally, I found out that I was chewing on my grandpa's beard. <laughs> so that's how much uh, he was famous for being the cotton candy grandpa. And this is my dad, Ravi Chandran. And this is a carnival cruise. If you have been on a carnival cruise, you know they have this Harry's Chess Man competition. Uh -huh. He did win the competition and uh, he was really popular for the weekend. They kept playing on the, on the TV and stuff. <laughs> of course, my mom was not happy with <laughs> <laughs> And that's me. So, a uh, Water Street parking garage, uh, she was the attendant there. And uh, she kept calling me handsome after having a beard. Until then, she never noticed me. So, <laughs> I ordered some flowers. It made us more happy. <laughs> okay, this is the game I want you guys to play. Can you tell me which is the bald head and the baby's butt? <laughs> okay. So you see the reason why I'm saying it's good to have hair. Why men should be hairy? He keeps you warm. You can hug him like a teddy bear, and he'll appreciate for who you are, even if you miss uh, the tweezers or the blades for a couple of days. By that, he appreciates your personal upkeep. If you do not miss it, and he he would be more open, willing to share things with you. Just keep in mind, grooming is the main thing. I call it manscaping. <laughs> so you don't want to look like a snowman or the werewolf. <laughs> and Movember is the month where you have the mustache. Uh, you create awareness for people. I mean, you would ask, hey, what are you doing with the mustache? And I would say, hey, uh, it's for the testicular and prostate cancer. We're raising awareness for it. And uh, would you like to have a cat that looks like a rat? No. No. Or a real cat? <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs>